Steve Delinsky. How are you, sir? Thank you for being oh, here. That's my name card. That's your name card? <laughs> the food, it's the food guy. Now, I'm sorry. It's the food guy. Did I, did, am I going to get sued for using something that's uh, no, trademarked? No, as long as you don't try to make money off of it, you'll okay, be I'm fine. Okay, I'm not going to make money off of it. It's all going to go to charity. <laughs> uh, I was saying achievement for News Gathering Lifestyle for the food guy. This is your, this is your first Emmy? Yeah. Congratulations. Was, uh, thanks. I've got uh, 13 James Beard Awards, and now I've got one Emmy. So w which means more to you, or do they both mean? I mean, the They're James both, Beard Award is... Well, the Beards is for food, right? right? And this is for television. And I do food television, so I, I, they're both great. What uh, was this a composite that you put together for uh, for this award? I can't remember. I think it was a composite at this point because it was so many months ago. But yeah, I know the piece that they were showing when I walked up was a piece I did from uh, Istanbul, and I, really? I well, I was over there and I found a certain type of kebab mm -hmm. called chak kebab, and then I went to a place in Wicker Park where they also make this unique kebab that nobody else in the city has. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I like doing. What's the place in Wicker Park called? Um, it's called Cafe Istanbul. Cafe Istanbul. Yeah, there's one a, in, uh, there's... It's like, it's like Division and Damon. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm thinking of Cafe Turquoise. There's one in Roscoe that's Village. That's in Roscoe Village, yeah. No, yeah. they don't do chak kebab. They don't do chak kebab. So no. how, what does that taste like? It's, uh, it's all lamb. Mm -hmm. So typically the you know, donor kebab is lamb and beef mm -hmm. uh, or lamb and veal. Uh, this is all lamb and it's grilled over hardwood charcoal, but it's grilled horizontally, not vertically, like a donor. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. I'm going to set this down here. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's delicious. It's charred. It's juicy. It's You eat it right off the skewer. Right. So uh, let me ask you the bigger, broader question. Since the days of Hungry Hound, the food guy, how has is, how is the food scene changed? How has your job changed? What's, what's, what's different about Chicago food 2023 versus 10, 20 years ago? Well, since COVID, we've really gone to more approachable food. I think more, you know, they've got a little less uh, uh, tasting menu format. There are still tasting menus in Chicago, um, high ticket places like the Omakase Room at 250 dollars ahead. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, we've gone to more approachable. I see a lot of Italian restaurants in Chicago, a lot of pasta, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of soups and salads. I mean, it's just easier and less expensive for restaurant tours. Their costs are going up with you know, labor and minimum wage now, and right. now uh, pay time off. So it's getting to be more challenging to be a restaurant. You think it's going to be hard for like the the folks that aren't part of these big groups, like the Rich Melman Group and the other groups, like just a mom and pop restaurant? Are they, how are they going to deal with all of this? They're going to have to raise their prices. I mean, you're going to spend eighteen dollars for a corned beef sandwich, and just have to get used to it. Eighteen dollars for corned yeah, beef. Sandwich. Yeah, because you just you know the bread's expensive, the beef's expensive, the people who make it that you know they've got to ship it to you. It's just, it's everything costs more money now. And so, yeah, you're going to see the average price is going to keep going up, I think. Are there are, are there a few uh, mom-and-pop shops you want to plug right now that, that are just doing an amazing job? And oh, there's really so many. I mean, I just did a story this weekend, Spinning Jay, oh, yeah. a little soda fountain in yeah. Humboldt Park. Yeah. Um, the Cafe Istanbul guy in, in Wicker Park's amazing. Um, there are so many places in, in Pilsen. I just, I, the Chicago is loaded with little mom and pops, which is what I love. And that's kind of, you know, I do all kinds of food coverage, but I really get excited about the little joints that don't have a PR firm or a marketing budget. And, you know, I get to, I, I try the place, I call them back, I want to come back and do a story on it. There's a place called Tuk Tuk Thai Cuisine up in Lakeville, I'm going to do a story on pretty mm -hmm. soon. You know, nobody really knows about it. So, that, the, the best is like the, the places where like the proprietor, the chef, uh, they're also like the server. They come out and they, it's just, it's like a one family or one person, you know, band. They do everything. Yeah. Roy up, uh, up in like Lincoln Square I went to last night. Amazing. And it's, you know, a mom and her son and she's usually in the kitchen. Yeah. But a lot of challenges right now. I mean, just given so the... tough. Well, when people say like, oh, I'm so sorry. I heard that place X place closed. Right. Like, well, when was the last time you went? Right. You've got to support those places now. Otherwise they won't be there tomorrow. Got to support the neighborhood places. Absolutely. I mean, I think the big groups are going to do okay. You know, they've got the Resources Always going to be Boca Group and let right. us entertain you in Alinea right. and Hog Salt. Right. They do great. I mean, they've got challenges, but you really want to support the little random strip mall on, you know, Dundee, out in the suburbs. You know, they're just trying to make their way. Those are the kind of places I really want to So support. how do you ensure, like, because I know a lot of the food critics, there used to be Phil Vitell or whatever in the Tribune, they wanted to stay anonymous, but you're not anonymous, obviously. So does yeah. it change the way? Do you want people to just, like treat you like a normal customer and not go all out for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a food critic. I'm not reviewing right, the places right, right. and giving them like a number or food some journalist. kind of rating. Yeah. I'm a food journalist, yeah. I'm looking for stories. Obviously, people have seen my segment and they might recognize me, but I gotta say, typically I'm doing immigrant food and they tend to watch satellite television from back home and they rarely recognize me when I come in to try the place. There you go, all right. Yeah. Well, Steve Delinsky, congratulations on your first Emmy. Thanks. First of many. <laughs> you, you've got some catching up to do with the James Beard Awards. Yeah, thank it's you. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Likewise. All right. Take care. Take Have care. a great evening. Thank you.